this lesson, we'll look at ways to prove some quadrilaterals are special quadrilaterals, and we'll start with rectangles. A rectangle is a parallelogram in which all four angles are congruent. So if we're given a parallelogram where all four angles are congruent, we know that it's a rectangle, and this, of course, is the reverse of the definition. Each pair of angles must be congruent and supplementary, so they must all be right angles. So now we're given a quadrilateral that has four right angles. The four right angles allow us to prove that the opposite sides are parallel since congruent and supplementary angles on the same side of a transversal prove lines parallel. Therefore, if you're given a quadrilateral with four right angles, you know it must be a rectangle. Now we're given a parallelogram with just one node right angle. But we can prove it's a rectangle because we know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, so that means that angle B is also a right angle. And then, since angles on the same side of a transversal of two parallel lines are supplementary, we can mark the other two angles as right angles because the supplement of a right angle is another right angle. So now we have all four angles are right angles, and we know that's a rectangle, so we've just proven that if we're given a parallelogram with one right angle, we know that all four angles are right and it's a rectangle. Now we're given a parallelogram with two congruent diagonals. And because it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. So we have two overlapping congruent triangles, ADC and BCD. And they're congruent by side, side, side with the shared side, DC. And that means that angle ADC is congruent to angle BCD by corresponding parts. But those two angles are congruent angles on the same side of a transversal of parallel lines, so they, of course, must be right angles. And now we have two right angles of this parallelogram, so we know that all four are right angles, and we know that it must be a rectangle. So we've just proven that if a parallelogram has congruent diagonals, it is a rectangle. And we move on to rhombuses. A rhombus is a parallelogram in which all four sides are congruent. So if you're given a rhombus, that's the reverse of the definition. If you're given a parallelogram with all four sides congruent, you know that it's a rhombus. Now we're given a parallelogram with two consecutive sides congruent. Well, if it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, so all four sides are congruent. And it's a rhombus. We've just proven that if we're given a parallelogram with two consecutive sides congruent, it's a rhombus. Now we're given a parallelogram that has a diagonal that bisects two of the angles. Since the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, we know that all four of the angles marked in red are congruent because it's two congruent angles that are each bisected. And then we see that those sides are congruent because there's two triangles formed and they must be isosceles because if angles then sides and of course the triangles are congruent by angle side angle all four sides are congruent so the parallelogram is a rhombus and we've just proven that if either diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles of the parallelogram then it is a rhombus and now we're given a quadrilateral with diagonals that are perpendicular bisectors of each other and you can see four congruent right triangles congruent by side, angle, side. And that gives us by corresponding parts that all four sides of the quadrilateral are congruent. And the quadrilateral is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. And more than that, it's a rhombus because all four sides are congruent. So we've just proven that a quadrilateral in which the two diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other is a rhombus. And now let's look at squares. A square is a parallelogram in which all four sides and all four angles are congruent. Well, of course, you can prove it by the reverse of the definition. And you can also prove a quadrilateral is a square if you can prove that it is both a rectangle and a rhombus. And now let's look at kites. We know that there's two definitions for kite. A kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of congruent adjacent sides. Or, a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. In the second definition, that means they don't have to be distinct pairs. Well, we get the reverse of each definition, and that'll prove a kite. At the top, a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of congruent adjacent sides is a kite. 
A quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent adjacent sides is a kite in the bottom definition. Notice our sketches for each definition are the same, but of course in the bottom, the two pairs do not have to be distinct. They just happen to be in the sketch. Now here is a quadrilateral in which one of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of the other. And we have four triangles formed. The two on the left are congruent by side angle side and the two on the right are congruent by side angle side. One pair of sides of course is MB and MC from the diagonal that was bisected. The other pair of sides is the shared side in each triangle, MA in the two on the left, MD in the two on the right, and of course the angles inside angle side are all the right angles with vertex M. And then by corresponding parts we get that AB is congruent to AC and DB is congruent to DC. The quadrilateral therefore is a kite because two distinct pairs of adjacent sides are congruent. But what we have proven is that in the first definition, if exactly one diagonal of a quadrilateral is the perpendicular bisector of the other, then the quadrilateral is a kite. And we could also prove with a very similar proof, if one or both of the diagonals of a quadrilateral is the perpendicular bisector of the other, then the quadrilateral is a kite. And finally, let's look at isosceles trapezoids. And they go along with the trapezoid definition that a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And an isosceles trapezoid, it's a trapezoid in which the two sides that are not parallel are congruent. And, and they, of course, are called the legs. Well, we have the reverse of the definition. We're given a trapezoid in which the two sides that are not parallel are congruent, so we know it's isosceles. But now we're given a trapezoid in which the lower two base angles are congruent. And while we're not sure yet that it's isosceles, that's what we're going to prove, that if the lower two base angles are congruent, then the two legs have to be congruent as well. It's much like in a triangle, if angles then sides. Let's see if that works for trapezoids. Since the two sides that are the legs are not parallel, they have to intersect. So we're going to extend those two sides so that they intersect at point E. And then because two of the sides of the trapezoid are parallel, we have some transversal. And then we have two pairs of corresponding angles. Because of the pair of parallel sides in the trapezoid, we have that angle EAB is congruent to angle EDC by corresponding angles. And angle EBA is congruent to angle ECD also by corresponding angles. Then we have the triangle at the top, EAB. We know that it must be isosceles because if angles, then sides. And the entire large triangle, EDC, also is isosceles, so that ED is congruent to EC, also because if angles, then sides. Only in this case, the angles are the two angles at the very bottom. And for the little triangle at the top, it was the angles EAB and EBA. And then by segment subtraction, we get that segment AD is congruent to segment BC. And we've just proven that if you're given the lower two base angles of a trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles. And it would be a very similar proof to prove it for the upper two base angles being congruent. To summarize, here's the ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a rectangle. A parallelogram in which all four angles are congruent is a rectangle. A quadrilateral with four right angles must be a rectangle. A parallelogram with a right angle is a rectangle. If a parallelogram has congruent diagonals, it is a rectangle. And now to summarize ways to prove a quadrilateral is a rhombus. A parallelogram in which all four sides are congruent is a rhombus. A parallelogram with two consecutive sides congruent is a rhombus. If either diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles of the parallelogram, then it is a rhombus. A quadrilateral in which the two diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other is a rhombus. In order to prove that a quadrilateral is a square, simply prove that it is both a rectangle and a rhombus. To prove that a quadrilateral is a kite, start with the reverse of the definition. A quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of congruent adjacent sides is a kite. Or if you're using the other definition, a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent adjacent sides is a kite.
Another way to prove kites, if exactly one diagonal of a quadrilateral is the perpendicular bisector of the other, then the quadrilateral is a kite, or if you're using the other definition, if one or both of the diagonals of a quadrilateral is the perpendicular bisector of the other, then the quadrilateral is a kite. And finally, start with the reverse of the definition. A trapezoid in which the two sides that are not parallel or congruent is an isosceles trapezoid. And then, if either the upper or lower two base angles of a trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles.